Everyone, this is Carter with First Updates now checking in at the Michigan State Championship. Today I'm here with 2054, the Tech Bikes. They have an awesome robot this year, very well packaged, very wide intake, awesome trap mechanism, and a shoot on the move, so much more. Let's check it out on Behind the Bumpers. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, and Noah, can you tell me a little bit about the strategy going into this match? or going into the competition season, what you guys decided to do, why you decided to do certain things and what changed strategy wise throughout the season? Yep, so basically starting out, we just kind of, we were like, what do we want to focus on? We kind of went to like amp and shooter big aspects. So being able to do both was big and then let the trap come as it may. Um, we decided to start doing something with it just based off of when we first went to St. Joe, like an hour before we left. So that built into that. But basically the main goal is to be able to climb fast, shoot fast and do everything pretty much. It's kind of one of our team goals usually. All right, and Dave, can we see this note actually moving through the robot? Yes, so to get into our robot, it comes from the back here. There's a kicker motor under our bumpers that kicks it up into our speaker or into our shooter and intake. Once it enters our shooter and intake, it idles here until we decide we need to shoot it. Uh, we have multiple shoot positions. Most of them are autonom autonomously controlled by that limelight based on where the April tag is and how far we are away but we do have a few manual positions. This is our amp position. So we roll right up to the side of the amp, sit there and out comes the note, just back the intake out and into the amp it goes. We've had extreme success with our amp so far. So, yeah. Awesome, any iterations you guys have had to go through with different wheels, different compressions on the, wheel, or on the uh, note when um, you're shooting? We started out with a about a quarter inch to a half inch wider shooter, which let, allowed the notes to free float in there a little bit more and it's, they did, it didn't seem to be shooting as far or shooting as hard so we shrunk our shooter a little bit put a little bit more compression on the notes and it seems to shoot like a bullet now so um, we've gone through lots and lots and lots of iterations of these pulleys on the sides we've printed so many of them um, coming up with different height walls so that our belts don't come out um, these infinity belts, which are actually what the core of our shooter and our intake. Awesome. Is it, mechanically, the note path looks awesome. Can we move on to the trap mechanism and can we get an example after you explain it? Yeah, of course. All right. Okay, so this is our trap mechanism. Uh, we use this roller here to guide the note down. Like so. These here allow us to keep the door open so that the note will end up going in. These zip ties were actually a mistake on our part, but they ended up allowing the path to be way more smooth. Uh, moving on here, this is our climber. Uh, we use a series of spacers and pulleys in here to bring this down. Uh, we decided that we wanted to wench our chain between the robot here to be more stable on it, on the chain. Awesome. Mechanically, overall, this robot looks absolutely beautiful. Very well packaged. Now let's move on to the software side of things. Talk about your shoot on the move. Talk about your beautiful autonomous modes that has landed you in the number one EPA position in your division at the time being. Yeah, so all of our autonomous pads we've been working through for weeks, we run Path Planner. This is our only our first year actually running Java and command base to have the ability. We wrote our own Path Planner when we were in LabVIEW two years ago. So using that, we're still kind of learning with the new Java between we were running time-based last year, but everything's like really simple command-based. Um, we're just running set positions and then we're looking at the April tags to read the TY values. To get strictly the arm position, we're just running 100% control on the shooter at all times. Um, the trap is just simple parallel. It's just got one servo that it releases it. It's just a reverse intake command. And then the climbers are just a two stage. So once the drivers release them and they come up, once they're on that chain, they hit X, it comes down and it'll put the trap in on its own. Um, it also features intake sensors, so it knows when it has the notes, mostly for auto. And then one of my favorite features on this is on the backside, we actually have an additional limelight down at the bottom that allows the robot to see the notes and the driver during uh, our teleop and during autonomous can actually use it and the robot will track into the note and rotate to it so the driver doesn't have to do much work on if he can't see well. All right, awesome on the software side of things. I have one more mechanical question for you guys. 
I'm curious why you guys decided to uh, choose welding instead of rivets and bolts uh, for your superstructure. I love it. So our team prides ourselves in being all student based when it comes to stuff like this. So welding is a big part of something that we do as students to build our robot. We find it to be much stronger and it's much more versatile than say riveting or just regular fasteners. It allows us to build a stronger, more robust robot that can take a few more hits, maybe climb a f or fall off your climb a few more times. It's just, it allows us to be more rigid, robust, and it just gives the students a good opportunity to learn a very useful skill in life, honestly. And we've had students come start here, weld here. This is the first time I've ever touched a welder, and now they weld as a career. It just, it, it's a very diverse outlet for our team. All right, overall, an incredible uh, incredible performance from you guys this weekend. I'm looking forward to see how you guys do the rest of the weekend. Good luck. This is Carter with First Updates Now, signing out. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.